you're also taking a risk as well mm -hmm. yeah. because you know as well as I do that if you're chasing someone who's stolen a bike, you're travelling at high speed. What are you doing to stop me becoming a victim? By early 2019, things started to fall apart for Omar. After multiple successful recoveries with Biker Biker, Omar announced on a now private YouTube video that he was splitting from them over allegations that donations were being taken from supporters and put towards holidays and personal effects for members. This forced Omar to rethink his strategy moving forward. This is where Repo Revenge was born. A close set of Omar's friends worked together collecting intel and working on taking back bikes that had been stolen. In one positive investigation, they were aware of a young man in Birmingham who went by the name of Mr. Dingers. He was a prolific car thief and after watching his Instagram stories, Omar's team were able to track him down after he blurred out all of his details from his shipping address on a box of sweets he'd been sent. But he failed to cover up the tracking number. This was used along with a postcode of an area that they were tipped off that he was living in. We, um, we obviously got a load of tip-offs about who he was. Um, they all seemed to say the same thing, so we took a bit of certainty from that. We then looked at you know, his close friends, his family. Um, that also confirmed where we thought he was, who he, he couldn't help but brag about his box of sweets that was in the post, put a picture number. Uh, when we ran that, the tracking number with the postcode that we thought it was, um, they came back and gave us all the tracking information. So, you know, his, uh, his sweet tooth kind of. <laughs> so, um, so this, what is it? So it was like a Instagram business that tried to sponsor a criminal. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of businesses that are sending them free, free swag because uh, they think it's fine for criminals to sponsor or to be their sponsor, or sponsor criminals. Sorry, um, and in this case, you know, they blacked out every single detail apart from the track number that was at the bottom of the box, uh, which was really useful because at least it made sure that we concentrated on kind of the important number. And we didn't look at any of the other ones. Because uh, in fact, you... what's happening, Omar, is, but you, as you mentioned, you alluded to it earlier, actually, in our chat this morning, you're actually at risk yourself because, uh, you know, they don't like you uh, looking at what they're doing, do they? So you've had threats and stuff. Yeah, I've had, I get death threats on a daily basis. Uh, I had to move house twice in the last year. The information with all the evidence that Mr. Dingus had so cleverly filmed himself was collated and sent over to Greater Manchester Police. Days later, the police struck and raided his house. One arrest and multiple stolen items were recovered. Shortly after, Omar was blasted by the media and faced heavy criticism after he published a video of his encounter with a London bus. So just before I play the clip, I've got to do a narration over this, otherwise I'll get copyright striked. All right, so you see Omar checking a bus out, catches the registration. All right, beep team. It should be it. That should be done and dusted. Are you fucking serious? There shouldn't be any more issues at this point. Wait there. So we stopped ahead of him. Bus Go. is pulled over. It's raining. It's raining. You have no right to pull out. No, no. You have no right to pull out like that. Guy pulls Why? him on the bus. Well, asks him to come on and closes the door. What are you doing? 
What are you doing? What are you doing? I've got to say it doing? is weird. What are you doing? Why are you telling me to get off the bus? The door? <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you trying to entrap me? Are you f***ing serious? Are you serious? Doors are open now, by the Why way. Why are you trying to entrap me? Why are you trying to entrap me? Why now are he's saying you step out. To entrap me? Why are you trying to entrap Omar me? Omar does say this a lot, so I've trimmed this clip down a like hell of a lot. Number, your driver's number. Why are you pulling up? I've got it all on camera. I've got it all on camera. What do you mean it don't matter? Do you know what the giveaway line means? Do you know wait, wait, do you know what the giveaway line means? He do says this a lot, FYI. Do you know what the giveaway line means? Did you tell me to come in or not? That's where I've trimmed Did it, because he said it a lot. Or not? Did you? Did you not? There's me thinking you are a fing man, you fing wimp. Alright, he's off the bus. Line, you Doors are closing and Omar is <laughs> opens the back up. Out. It's my fing life, isn't it? Tramp. Oh tramp. man. Get out. Get and out. yeah, there Get we out. go. Get out. Driver closes the doors, gets the panic alarm, and drives off to a station. It's just... The actions here are not cool. And uh, the music over this, by the way, is what Omar added, not me. Oh my god! Oh my... So Omar can, is free to leave at any point because the doors are open. But he's gone back to go and... I fucking dare you. Step out. Step out. Continue Step this out. argument with the driver. It's just unnecessary, man. Those people on a bus out. must have been Step out. absolutely Step terrified. Out. You are fucking cunt. You are a dirty piece of shit. Again, more of Omar's music added on this. That's the emergency stop for the engine, but the bus has already stopped, so it's not going to do anything. But then it goes around the back here to open up the engine bay. Um, I'm not sure he knows what he's looking for because he searches around, can't find anything, then walks off. This whole incident was just ridiculous. This was quickly taken down after his fans expressed their disappointment in his behaviour, but not before it had been copied and re-uploaded multiple times to news websites. Sheepishly, looking back, he admitted fault, saying, I'm not proud to be honest. This followed a string of videos which showed another side to Omar's temper. In one of the incidents, Omar is rear-ended in a seemingly random and unnecessary encounter with a 4x4 after some gestures were exchanged. You hit me from behind! I know, it's the back of the I slowed down because this car's here! That's his fault. That's You're lucky these guys are here! You're lucky these guys are here! He should never put him to the back of you, yeah? What do you think? Because you're an angel! You're a f***ing 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 no, no, my back is hurting me. He hit me from behind. You can't just rear in someone. If you drive away, I've got your camera. If you drive away, you're 
You pull over! Insurance, insurance will deal with it, yeah? Insurance will deal with it. You better pull over now! No! Pull over! I don't want this! Additionally, Omar filmed himself chasing and then calling out a driver who was driving dangerously as he undertook Omar's bike. You almost killed me, man. You almost killed me, man. Get out the car. Get out the car. Get out the car. Come on, you. Omar was questioned in an article by shortlist.com about causing or forcing conflicts on the road for YouTube views. This was something that he strenuously denied, but now years after I used to watch his videos as he uploaded them, it's hard to believe so much bad luck just happened to happen to a man while he was filming. Omar believed he was making a difference with his videos. The police were less certain. When contacted by shortlist.com, the Metropolitan Police said they encouraged anyone who was a victim of crime or witnesses a crime to report the matter to the police and support the subsequent investigation with any information or evidence they can provide. When questioned specifically about Omar's actions, we won't comment on specific alleged vigilante actions. In July 2018, Omar was summoned by the police for an interview, but he never disclosed what the outcome of this was. After all this, his online presence goes dead in the water. On the 25th of November 2019, Omar published his last YouTube video, and only two months later on Instagram on the 21st of January 2020, Omar published his last Instagram post, explaining it had all come to an end. Was this linked to Omar being summoned for an interview at the police station, or was it to do with the multiple death threats he kept receiving? With no context or reasoning behind this, speculation was rife. It was so out of the blue, he'd been regularly uploading videos for years, and then in the space of two months, he disappears. Some people talk about how they heard he'd been in jail for the incident on the bus. Others say he'd lost his license after police reviewed all of his dangerous riding and prosecuted him for it. And some even claim he'd been stabbed. The truth is, no one knows. There's no evidence proving any of those claims. In fact, a year after his swift exit from social media, he posted a shared video on his community comments on YouTube, commenting result on the video of a delivery cyclist chasing down a thief and getting his bicycle back from them. Omar had countless reasons to make an exit from social media. Some people think he owes us an explanation for it. In all honesty, he owes us nothing. He committed his life to returning stolen bikes, making thieves' lives harder, and raising awareness of an endemic that was plighting London's streets. So, what if he made money on the side from it? His life was changed forever. Finally moving for a third time deep out of London, did he ever expect it would get this bad? Probably not. Oh, shit. 
stand by for me. Following Omar's disappearance, moped theft fell by 53.7%. The Met Police established their own Operation Venice task force of bikers with suitable off-road bikes and high-performance streetcars that could actually chase thieves. The policy to abort moped chases if riders took their helmets off was scrapped and officers were given new powers to ram thieves off their bikes. Is there a definitive link between all of this? No, but it's my strongly held suspicion that if Omar's channel hadn't brought so much attention to the topic and scrutiny of the police's response to it, then we'd still be experiencing unprecedented motorbike and moped crime highs. Love him or hate him, he helped a lot of victims and aided in getting nasty people locked up. Now I should point out, I reached out to Omar twice before publishing this video. Both times, there was no reply. Omar, if you ever watch this, have mercy on my channel and don't copyright strike me. Thank you all for watching. You've been awesome. I've been legit. I'll see you in the next one.